like for you being part of that circle of Hakka mm -hmm. literature, um, who do you think would could be up for uh, the Nobel Prize in literature? Well, actually, Sai Sai has already been up for it. Mm -hmm. Last year, she was on the list. She was definitely, okay. we heard that she was definitely mm -hmm. one of the people that they were considering, you know, because mm -hmm. um, her translator, Jennifer Feely, Mm. won a big award in America, the National, I think it was the National Endowment of the Arts Award. And she's translating Sai Sai's, um, it's about her breast cancer, uh, the kind of memoir fiction. You know, you know well, Sai Sai's writing is always a little bit, you know, whatever. So I think that that is something, I mean, her work is being looked at now. And then she won the Newstead Prize um, in world, in world literature, you know? So, um, She's definitely somebody who is up there, I think, mm -hmm. um, of all the people. The person who would have been had he lived was P.K. Leung. Mm. I don't know, Nguyen, you know. Yassi, yeah. Yassi, yeah. But Yassi, Yassi was a friend of mine. And it was really sad when he died. And he was young, still, he was only in the 50s. And I was so upset because um, I saw him just a few months before he died. And we had dinner together. And he was... It was very hopeful at the time. His treatment was going very well. So we thought, oh, okay, maybe he will survive cancer, you know, because people do survive cancer, but then sometimes it gets people to really go. Mm. But I think he would have definitely been a contender. Those are the and two you, sorry. right now, yeah. Sai Sai and... and, and okay. Uh, but y'all see, you, now that he's died, he, he's not a contender. Oh, no, he's not eligible. If you were to write some sort of nomination statement uh, for these two writers for the, the Swedish Academy to consider mm -hmm. them, like how would you approach this task to nominate them? Like what would you include? I yeah. think this that they both embrace the cosmopolitan culture of what Hong Kong mm -hmm. was, because both of them were really in tune with the literatures of the world. You can mm -hmm. see that in both their work. They make reference to it and things like that, you know? Um, Sai Sai was, is, is very inventive in use of language and in the way she looked at Hong Kong from the beginning, you know, like my city. What do you think? Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, the first time I read it, I didn't quite know what to make of it, but you know, I was like, I get it. She understands the, the kind of floating world we're in. And mm -hmm. the floating world, of course, is a long tradition in Chinese literature, but she also, I think, she seems to connect into like the surrealists, I sort of yeah, feel. Yeah, the Magritte paintings and such, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. I, yeah. I really think that she understands that that somehow captures the spirit of what we can think about being in Hong Kong. Because Hong Kong is, you know, borrowed place, borrowed time. You know, we're such an anomaly. And I think that both these writers were, could be very local on the one hand, especially uh, PK, because mm -hmm. PK would write about very Hong Kong things food, fashion, you know, film, whatever, you know, he, he was really tapped into, and place, he had all these wonderful poems about, like the Yama Day Ferry, about, you know, North Point Ferry, about, you know, about all kinds of things that are very iconic local sites in Hong Kong that anybody in Hong Kong would, of his generation, especially, would understand. Um, and he drew also from his, in some of his prose, he drew from his own personal experience because he moved house, <laughs> he moved out to the, and I, I remember this one wonderful essay he wrote that's about moving house. The interesting thing is that both of them were quite fluent in English as well. Yeah. Uh, or, or, I mean, in the case of Sai Sai, I mean, I know that uh, PK, I mean, he was a translation person, you know, and he actually wrote a few poems in English, not very many. Mm -hmm. He actually wrote with me, and he he participates in the translation of his work. Uh, Dong Kai Jung does also, mm -hmm. um, and I can understand why they do because they really are bilingual and they are inter intellectuals, intelligentsia who who were in that position teaching in the university, which is all English medium, you know. So so they they really embrace the multi bicultural cosmopolitan nature of Hong Kong as well as the very local. Uh, I mean. Tea coffee, you know, the mm. yin yang kind of tea coffee. PK has a poem about that. It, that's something so Hong Kong, so local, you know? Um, mm. And I think that the, the ability to be both local yet connect to the world, because that is, that is what Hong Kong is or has been.